Okay, this week we're going to do hypothesis testing, and hypothesis testing kind of has five steps. So, first thing we have to always establish is, step one, is the null hypothesis, H0, and then the alternative, HA. So, in H0, just like we did with confidence intervals, we have to pick our population parameter. And as we have done in our course, our population parameter is going to be either mu or p. And our null is always equal to some value. Now, this value typically is what everyone believes to be true. Right? So, what most of us assume to be true. Uh, some examples, you know, when you go get a Subway sandwich and you order a foot long, you expect the sandwich to be 12 inches. When you buy a 16-ounce soda, you expect 16 ounces in the soda. So that's what I mean by we expect what everyone believes to be true. When you purchase something, most of everyone in the population believes it to be true. The alternative is what you, the statistician, is trying to prove or your claim. Again, you'll use the same population parameters, mu or p. And again, you can use any population parameter you want, but for our course, mu and p are the two that we do. And the value does not change. So whatever the value is for your null hypothesis is also the value for your alternative. Then you have three options. Less than, greater than, ah, get those backwards. Greater than, less than, or not equal to. These are based on your claim, right? So if you think Pepsi is not putting 16 ounces in their soda, then your, your claim would be the average is less than 16 ounces. Um, if you think Subway is not giving you a foot-long sandwich, then the average is less than a foot-long. Um, not equal kind of means that the value has changed. It could be greater than, it could be less than, so that's what for non equals. So that's step one. Your null, your population parameter equals a value. Your alternative, your population parameter is less than, greater than, or not equal to that same value. And then we go to step two. This is where you calculate your test statistic. And each population parameter has different test statistics, um, and those I've posted in the announcements. Uh, you just do up the formulas, or you can use technology, but you calculate your test statistic based off your claim. Step three, you can find a p-value or critical value. p-value is a probability. A critical value is an event. So therefore, we step four, oh, change color on you. p-value is compared to our level of significance alpha. Now remember what alpha was. Alpha was the tails of confidence intervals. So there is a relationship between hypothesis tested and confidence intervals. If you're going to do critical value, a critical value is compared to compared to the test statistic. Critical values are where your Z star, T star, or P star. Right, that's the values you found in your confidence intervals. All right, so let's take a minute here and kind of talk about these things here for a second. So you can see a good picture of what's going on. So I have a bell curve. And remember, a Z and a T looks the same. The only difference is the T is a little fatter than the tails, but it is still a bell shape, still 
7 at 0. So, again, when we're doing confidence intervals, right, this was our confidence interval percentage, which we found by 1 minus the alpha, and then this was alpha over 2, and this was alpha over 2, right? So alpha over 2 is a probability because it's the area in the tail. So that's where we are here. And then remember we had either a Z or a T, Z or a T, and these were our critical values or our stars. Remember over here it is negative. Well, if you do hypothesis testing, Try to draw one right below. I shouldn't draw that one so big. But and you are doing a not equals to. That means two tail. Then I have my p values based off my test uh, statistic. So to test stat, we'll just abbreviate it there. So this is why we, on step four, we compare p-value to alpha, or we compare critical values to test statistics, because you got to compare apples to apple here. They're saying you can't compare apples to oranges. P-values in alphas are probabilities, so therefore you must compare those two things together. And test statistics and critical values are events, so you must compare them. So our final step, step five, is if we reject or do not reject. So we have some claim and we're going to say our alternative is greater than so therefore we're up here in the tail right so we get a test statistic and then we find a probability based off that test statistic and that will give us our p-value Now, to find p-values, you pretty much have to use technology, unless you're going to go back to week two and you're going to take every problem and find standardize, normalize it, and then find your z-value um, to find your p-value. So if you're going to do the p-value approach, then you need to do uh, use technology, either Excel or StatCrunch. Um, I will post a video later in the week on how to do the calculations and how to use technology. First video of the week is always kind of the theory of what's going on. Um, <clears throat> if you don't want to do the p-value approach, then you still have to calculate a test statistic, and then you just compare it to your critical values, and you find your critical values just like you did in week last week with confidence intervals. Now, last thing about uh, hypothesis testing. Statisticians, we don't like to be wrong. So therefore, we either reject, reject or do not reject the null. All right, we always go back to our hypothesis. So we either are going to reject the claim that Subway sandwiches are 12 inches or Pepsi sodas are 16 ounces with sufficient evidence, which means we have figured this part out, um, that we figured out here. Or we do not reject because we do not have sufficient evidence. We never say we support the claim. Right? And how do we know if we reject or do not reject, or if we have statistic evidence? So, I draw a bell curve, All right? And again, we're gonna, we'll go back to the Pepsi. And our claim is that the average is less than the 16 ounces. So we calculate a test statistic, and say our test statistic is right here. Let's do test stat. Right? <clears throat> so, therefore, this is our p value. 
Well, if we find that our alpha is all of this, so here is our alpha, or our little arrow just went right on the self. This is our T star, is right there. You notice that our test statistic is in the bad region, right? So I fell inside this region. Therefore, in this case, I would reject the claim that Pepsi is 16 ounces. In other words, I have statistical evidence to state that Pepsi is underfilling their sodas. Now, if we keep to the same example, and then our T, our, not T star, sorry, our test statistic is here, which again makes this our p value. However, our T star or our alpha here in red is on that side, well, you can see that we are still in the bad region, but we're also in the good region. Therefore, we do not reject. There is not sufficient evidence to say that Pepsi is underfilling their sodas. Even though we do have this section that's in the bad, we also have a chance of not being in the bad, and because, again, our statisticians don't like to be wrong, we're not going to argue that Pepsi is or is not underfilling their sodas. We're just going to say we don't have enough evidence, because we don't know if we're here or if we're here. All right, so that's the, the, kind of the issue with hypothesis testing. So I always like to do the p-value approach, because the p-value has a nice, simple rule. If p-value is less than or equal to alpha, reject. If not, so if p-value is greater than alpha, do not reject. And that, oops, reject. And that always works. If you want to do test statistics and t stars, then you always need to draw a picture to find out where things lie. And there is rules depending on if you're doing less than or greater than, but I always just draw a picture. And if they're not inside each other's region, fully inside their region, then that's how I make my claim. But the p-value is a much easier approach because a p-value, if it's less than alpha, reject. P-value is greater than alpha, do not reject. Your alpha is called your level of significance. And typically, that is always given. Uh, if you're doing your own testing, you know, after you leave our classroom, uh, typically alpha is 5%, which deals with a 95% confidence interval, or 1%, which deals with a 99% confidence interval. You could go 10%, but most don't. 10% would be a 90% confidence interval. So you can see where these alphas come from when you're doing this week's lesson. Typically, you're going to see a 5% and a 1%, which correspond to a 95% and a 99%. Now, keep in mind... A do not equals is the same as a confidence interval because you have two tails. Uh, I mean, are not equals. A less than or greater than is a less, uh, right tail or left tail, just like we did in week one. So even though alpha is still one minus confidence interval, you got those would be a one-way interval confidence intervals, which we didn't really learn uh, in week last week, but they are something that you're allowed to do. So the only time we're going to test our hypothesis test and compare it to a confidence interval is when we're doing not equal to. All right, so I will post on how to use technology here in a few days, but I wanted to, again, to give you the understanding of how these lessons work. Uh, definitely re review in the book in the sections on the formulas for test statistics. They're good to look at. Again, I would prefer if you use technology if you want to do them by hand because you've got to calculate test statistics. Uh, proportions. You have to make sure that you're allowed to do a proportion test. Uh, and in the way you know that you're allowed to do a proportion test is if n times p times 1 minus p is greater than or equal to 10. Um, and uh, also making sure you haven't 
use more than 5% of the population. But this is kind of the key rule. If you have this, that will guarantee let you do a bell curve. Uh, you do a Z test statistic if you know sigma, right? So this is for proportions. You know, if you're doing the mean, you do Z if you know sigma or T if not. And just like confidence intervals, typically you will not know the population standard deviation, which we talked about last week. So you'll use S, the sample standard deviation. Therefore, you will pretty much always use the T. While if you're doing proportions, you will use the Z. So just like confidence intervals, no change there. Um, so that's kind of a hypothesis test. And so quick review. Step one. Let's see fly through back through our steps here. You always have to find your null and your alternative. Your null is what everyone technically believes to be true. The alternative is the claim what you, the statistician, are trying to prove. Always use the same population parameter for both. Always use the same value for both. The null is always equal. The alternative is either less than, greater than, or not equal to that value based on your claim. Step three, uh, step two, calculate your test statistic. Step four, find either a p-value or a critical value. I'm sorry, step three. Step four, find a p-value. Then now you've decided if you reject or do not reject. Um, and that's where we went through all those lessons. And kind of five is restate the problem back to the original. So step four, you either reject or do not reject. And then five would be Pepsi does underfill their soda or does not underfill their soda. All right. Have a good week. We're about half, almost after this week, we'll be halfway through the course. Please email me if you have any questions.